You're listening to Sarah Hagen Backstage, with interviews and insights from years inside the music industry. Join Sarah as she talks with masters of their crafts, finding out what makes them tick, both inside and outside of the music business. Welcome to Sarah Hagen Backstage. My guest today is the legendary percussionist, Luis Conte. Luis has played with some of the absolute biggest acts in music over the years. Madonna, James Taylor, Phil Collins, just to name a few. And so we talk about his growing up in Cuba, his musical preferences, his versatility genre-wise, and he gives us some amazing stories. So come along with me as I catch up with Luis Ponte. Hi, Luis. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You're doing good? Yeah, pretty good. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Hang in there. Perfect. Well, it's great to see you. It's been such a long time. And I know that um, you know, we we haven't seen each other in person in a long, long time. But... Long time, I know. Yeah, but I but see it's... you on social media. Yes, I and I see you too. It's very, yeah. very nice. That's the best thing about social media is yeah. keeping in touch, right? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, so I am so excited to talk with you because we really haven't had the chance to talk about your um, history. And of course, you know, we'll get into the amazing gigs that you've had and um, the things that everybody knows about. But I kind of want to go back to your start and your beginning because um, I am fascinated by Cuba, Cuban music. Yeah. And all of that. And I want to hear a little bit um, about, you know, you growing up in Cuba yeah. and, and your start in music. Yeah, well, it's, it's that's a good question because a lot of people think that, uh, oh, man, Luis, he was he was in Cuba, like, like digging on the rumba and the this and the. But really, I was listening to the Beatles. Yes, you were. That's amazing. Yeah, I was listening to the Beatles. I was listening to the Stones. I was listening to Aretha Franklin. I was listening to all the pop music. My dad had a radio that he had bought. It was like a, from Czechoslovakia or something. You know, it was a mm-hmm. we living under the Iron Curtain, behind the Iron Curtain. And uh, for some, some reason, this <clears throat> radio got the station. I'm from the south of Cuba, so it couldn't have been from the United States. It, it must have been Jamaican or something. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this thing got us. I could get the station with with American music, and it was all in English. I didn't understand English, so I didn't know what was what. And they played all the pop. It was a pop music station, the best thing that could have happened. And they played from. It wasn't like an R and B station, you know. They played everything. Wow. So you hear, yeah, the Four Tops, and then you hear the Beatles, and then you hear Aretha Franklin, and then you hear the Stones. You know, it's just crazy. That's so anyway, amazing. yeah, I was doing that, but at the same time, I'm not saying that I wasn't around that music. I, it was all around my neighborhood, my way of life, my family. You know, my even though my family, my dad was a doctor, and so was my uncle, and and my mom was just a housewife. But they loved music. My dad played instruments. He loved. He would like listen to the radio and talk about the bass part. Listen to the bass part on that song. You know. Wow. You know, yeah. So I grew up being very aware and listening to all kinds. My dad would play Cuban records, but then he would play opera. He would play mm-hmm. uh, big band music. He loved big band, Glenn Miller and Tommy Dorsey and all those, Count Basie. He had all these records and he would play that stuff on Sundays. So, and a couple of blocks from my house was the house of the troubadour, which is like, there was this where the song which is the, the root of Cuban music, the root of salsa comes from, mm-hmm. is from that area where I'm from. And there were like troubadours and, and these guys would come to my house and they play at a, at a, at a party at my house and I just grab, I grab the clavis and I play, because it's just what you do. Mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, I gotta learn where the clave is because it got, is it? oh, it's ping, 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 that's where it goes. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of how I, I, I got started. You know, my grandmother, also it's my grandmother's fault in a way that I play, end up playing percussion because when I was a, a, a baby, a real tiny, my, you know, I would like play 
or maybe not a baby dog, no, three or four or whatever. I would like mm -hmm. have like little setups with cans and things that are just like the radio was on and I'd be playing, you know. Yeah. My grandma lived in Havana. My, it's my mom's grandma, my mom's mom. She lived in Havana. I lived in Santiago. So she would come and visit and stay with us for a couple of months and then go back and then mm -hmm. come back. Every time she came home, she brought me an instrument. She brought me a guido. She brought me maracas, <clears throat> claves, bongos, you know. I love that. So I just, I did it. I would play to the radio. I would play when those guys would show up in my house. But I have no idea I was going to play. I didn't even know I was going to be a musician. Wow. I didn't know I was going to be a musician, you know, till when? Till I was 18. Wow, okay. Yeah. I'm, it's, so it was I'm, just fun. It, it was just natural for you and, you know, just yeah. join in with the music, basically. It's kind of, it's, it's very strange. I mean, I talk to so many friends, you know, all our friends that we have, you know, all these guys, you know, oh, yeah, I was, you know, I was practicing when I was 12. Uh, this, mm -hmm. And, you know, oh, yeah, I was like, you know, Jimmy Johnson is like, oh, yeah, I was playing bass and, I mean, I didn't do one. I didn't play in high school. I didn't do any of that. Wow. I was just, yeah. So I played the guitar also. I told my, because of rock and roll, back in Cuba, I told my dad, hey, I want to play guitar. Besides, Cuban music has a lot of guitars also, the, the, the traditional songs. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to play guitars. I, I'm not a great player, but I can get around the chords and things like that. So it's, but it's, just love of music, not knowing that there's a profession of being a musician. This is just what I do. This is just yeah. fun. It was you just know? natural. So when I leave Cuba at the age of 15, by myself, it's a long, that's a whole other story. My dad sent me out of here, out of communism. And right. I, was only, I was 15 years old. And I lived in Hollywood. I came out of all places to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. what, Lord is great, man. The Lord takes me everywhere. We got to go. So I go to uh, <clears throat> end up in Hollywood living with a third cousin of my dad, who I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And there I am. And it was really not a normal uh, situation for me because they weren't like very musical. It was unlike, you know. So during my high school year, I was detached from music in a way, just still listening to the radio. I made some friends, joined a little band, you know, for high school, like played dances. But I was playing guitar. <clears throat> yeah, and then I ran into the drums again when I was like 18. And I went to a Los Angeles City College, and there was this, this African American Student Association event in the student uh, union thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were, they were playing congas. And I had not heard anybody play congas in like since I left. How? Yeah, and I heard those, man, the sound of those drums, it was like, it was somebody with a, with a vacuum cleaner going, Shh, you gotta come in here. And I was just like, whoop. And I just, I'll never forget it, man. I talked to those, they had Val J congas. They were beautiful, they're brand new, they looked really new. And I just went, hey, they, when they stopped playing, I went, hey, listen, hey, sorry, man, where, where'd you get those drums? <laughs> wow. And they say, "Oh man, down in sunset and this and that." Well, I saved up and got some congas, and that's how I got. That's how I got going. It was bad. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it must have been like bringing you back home, like to hear that sound and just you know that was home, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I could hear drums playing in in my home. You know, mm -hmm. in fact, you know, <clears throat> the guys be playing rumba somewhere. You can hear it from the distance. Carnival, we're a huge part. My family was a huge part of the carnival. My my aunts on my, these guys are all, most of them on my father's side because my mother's side is very small. He had like two sisters and a brother. And one of the sisters wrote the songs for uh, our carnival ensemble every year. It's a new song. You know, very musical people not being mus musicians. They're, they're doctors mm -hmm. and teachers. <clears throat> so I was around the whole thing. It was just, so when I heard those drums, it was like, exactly like you said, just going, I went back home immediately. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. And I, I'm thinking about you listening to the music on the radio too. And so you said you didn't speak English at the time. Did did your, um, did, did your parents speak English then? My or dad, my, my dad, um, 
he could read. He, he had some medical books that he'd be able to get once in a while. Right. Uh, and he could read uh, English some things. And I would ask him, hey, what does this mean? I would ask him from lyrics from a, from a song, like a Beatles mm -hmm. song. Called, and I'll, I'll, I remember always asking my dad, hey, dad, what does this mean? You've got to hide your love away. That's yeah. it. If, you, if you're studying, if you try to translate this to Spanish, you mm -hmm. can make any sense, you know? Yes, yeah. And yeah. that's what I was going to ask if you would ask, like, what does this mean or what are they saying, right? Because yeah. it's such a big part of the music. But then on the other side of that, you know, when I listen to music, when I don't, when you know, it's a language I don't understand. I, I think it puts me more in touch with the actual feeling of the instruments, you know, the music where I'm focused on that. Because I'm a big lyric person. So when that's taken out of the equation, you feel it, you know? So, yeah. like, that's that's so interesting to me. Yeah, and you know it's funny we mentioned about you mentioned about this on uh, lyrics and songs. Like I was speaking with Gad the other day, you know, we were on the road with James sometimes, and mm -hmm. I and realized that a lot of times, I mean, there's songs I love. There's actually songs of James Taylor. I don't know one word of, of a song, and we played it a million <laughs> times, but we know the music. Yes. And, and Gad is the same way. Gad goes, I know, man. You know, it's like it's weird. You know, it's it's. it's yeah. One of those things, you know. Yeah, but it has, but it has a feel, like it evokes a feeling, right? And that's yeah. that's all you really need. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so so you came to the United States and you kind of rediscovered percussion and yeah. all of that. And you know, when I think about when I think about you growing up listening to that that music, you know, from America or from from London, you know. Um, it's so interesting because you play percussion and you have this, you know, style to what you play, but you have played so many genres, you know, uh, and you put your percussion, you, it, it translates through the genres of music, which is so interesting because of how you grew up and the different music you grew up listening to. Thank you. Yeah. I think that's why, cause I, I was always wide open to everything. Even opera, man. My dad would play. I said, "What is that?" It was, "Oh, that's that's opera. That's like you know the magic flute." So, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, was, I was listening to it, but I also being around like my dad and my mom. You know, that that also open minded. You know, mm -hmm. music. You know, there's so some other people who would go. I don't. Know, I don't. You know, I only write like rap, or I don't like. You know, no, they they just whatever. So maybe that's why you know, and, and I just I love it all. And everything has a groove, man, you know. Everything's yeah, got a sure. groove. Yeah, and, and you, you, you talk about picking up the claves, right? And just like working it into the music. And I feel like yeah. you you've done that. And the and the and the groups and the acts, the musicians that you've played with are like at the absolute highest level. It's hard to even think of someone that you haven't played with. Maybe you can think yeah. of someone that you would have wanted to <laughs> play with at some point, but well, I would um, that I would have loved to have played with. Well, at least there's only two of them left: so Ringo and and, uh, and Paul. You know, yeah. Or, or, or play with the Stones. I would have loved to have done one of those. Oh things. yeah, for sure. But, How much fun? How much fun would that have been? That would have been um, great. But it's, it's, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, just just to name a few. So we we talked about James Taylor, but Carlos Santana and Rod Stewart, Eric Clapton. Madonna, yeah. um, Shakira, yeah. right? I mean, it's just it's an, it's incredible. But but it would have been fun to play with the Beatles for sure. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, some and, of those are is there are some of those are recording. Some of those I played live with. You know. But yes. I've been around all of them, man. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Um, and I I just have to ask if you saw. I'm sure you saw Get Back. Um, oh yeah. Documentary. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I could talk about that for an entire podcast, which we won't yeah, do. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love. I've seen it like two or three times. And me too. Me too. Yeah, especially yeah. The, the 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 second or the third. You know, the, a lot of the people the first one, but when you get into the thing, it's it's just amazing. Yes. Well, I say that too because you're right. A lot of people watch the first episode and then they don't keep watching because it's hard. The first the first episode is hard to watch because. And no spoilers. I'm not for anyone who hasn't watched yeah, it, but yeah. but it's hard because you see a lot of like conflict, right? And yeah. 
And it's hard to watch that. If I found it like, oh my gosh. But of course, like I knew how it turned out and I wanted to see it. Um, but I found the moments, you know, the moments that I, that fascinated me the most were watching the birth of these amazing songs that we grew up and that were part of our like being I, yeah. to, see them, to see the spark of imagination as it was happening yeah, was man. like a gift, right? Crazy. It's just crazy. Like them doing get back. I mean, uh, uh, Ringo, um, thought about octopus garden yeah and, hey i have this thing he just has a little and then george comes over and is like what what's going on you know, it's yeah. like this is magic you know yes. yes and i think we've all been in a musical situation where like something clicks like that and you think at the time like oh this is something right but to like watch it happen with an incredible like legendary piece of music um and then you know we can we can talk about ringo as a drummer too i I grew up listening to the Beatles, listening to Ringo and appreciating him and the music, but not fully understanding his genius when it came to the the writing of his parts, you know, because you yeah. hear them and they, they fit the music and it just flows. But to, to watch him watch and observe for all of that time and then just come out with this like perfect, unique piece of drumming, yeah, I thought was fascinating. Amazing and a unique feel too. It's got just a unique feel. It's a feel is yeah. you know. absolutely yeah. crazy. And, uh, amazing. <laughs> right. I'll tell you what though, an amazing thing though, I was just thinking that you're talking. I mean, we have that that thing, but then you know, we can start talking about Ida Kerry and Chucho Valdez and you know, all these badass, you know, Giovanni and all this super syncopated complicated stuff that's incredible yeah. too you know absolutely it's, music is fantastic yeah I, unbelievable i i was so lucky uh giovanni played pasic a couple of years back i want to say oh maybe 2019 yeah i think anyway um you know it was just like such a treat to see him do what he does and it just experience that music in person, you know, it, again, that I just percussion and the style of music is always like close to my heart. I just, it, you feel something I think with that music. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to see him work his genius was, was is, 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 is the root of, of the root of music is rhythm, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, and speaking of which, so, you know, I mentioned some of the artists that you've played with and recorded with, um, thinking about like playing with Madonna and like the eighties time period with the, all the electronics and all of that stuff. But yeah. then like thinking about you adding this, this, uh, real like organic piece to her music is yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's, uh, First, I'll, t I'll tell you a little story about how the gig happened. Please, you please do. yes. So, and then I'll tell you how how, how we worked when, when actually I came. Anyway, so um, this is a good example for anybody that's listening, especially youngsters, guys that are starting out, man. It's not just how good you play. It's your personality and who you are and what kind of person you are, how you get along with people, what how, how you deal with with life, okay? It's not just the chops. Because you can have all the chops in the world and you're gonna do, and maybe nothing will happen because you can't get along with anybody. Anyway, so right. long story short, there's a friend of mine that I have met, Dean Cortez, he's a bass player, calls me up. He says, hey man, my parents are coming from Puerto Rico. We're gonna have a little get together uh, on Christmas Eve. You wanna, you wanna come over? I said, yeah. So I come with my wife, Lupe, we go over there and I'm just with a few guys. I don't know who these guys are. And uh turns out that one, I'm, and I guess I was a nice guy. One of these guys was a guy named Mike Bloom who worked for Pat Leonard, who was Pat Leonard was Madonna's producer, who was putting together the band to go on tour. And I didn't know. So about a week later, I got a call from a Mike Bloom. Hey, hey, I met you at a, oh, oh yeah, man. I said, hey, would you want to come audition for from Madonna, I said, wow, you know, I've only auditioned once in my life. I don't really do auditions. Is this a cattle call? Or I said, no, no, <laughs> they audition like three people. 
Only three guys coming. I said, oh, okay, when? Blah, blah, blah. It gives me three songs that I got to learn. Okay. I get to the, the day that I'm supposed to be there. I get there super early, make sure my stuff is all tweaked up, everything's ready to go. And there's nobody there. There's a set of drums right next to my percussion, which is Jonathan Moffat, the great. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother, and this guy walks in, who I didn't know, and, it, and he sits behind the drums. Oh, that must be the drummer. Hey, I didn't know any of these guys, you know. He goes, hey, man, how you doing? Hey, I'm Luis. Hey, Jonathan, nice to meet you. So Jonathan starts tweaking his stuff, and he starts playing a groove. So I start playing with him. There's nobody there. Dude, whatever we played, we played for a while. So people start kind of walk up, people start walking in and all like that. And we stopped playing. And when we stopped playing, there was a balcony up on top of this rehearsal room. And Madonna had been up there all this time. Wow. And we stopped playing. I hear, you know, she has the dirtiest mouth in the world. She goes, <laughs> that was pretty effing good, you, you mofo, you know. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, that's great. You know? I go, oh, that's nice. That's how I got the gig. I love it. That's so great. You didn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 then you know now I'm in, I'm on the gig and and uh, the way we dealt musically with the thing now we we have the band and and, and Pat comes up and goes hey listen there's a bunch of percussion a lot of program stuff that we've done this is actually still before Pro Tools but they would use other things mm -hmm. so they gave me complete freedom and says listen to the song. What you cannot, what you don't want to play, that's there. So let's say it's a shaker or a cabasa or something. If you don't want to do that, just tell Rory, who was the uh, the electronic guy, tell him mm -hmm. to keep that, and you want to play something else. Okay. So that was just left up to me. I was never told what to play. That's I was I only was told to play one sample. I have, uh, they, uh, they told me, hey, you got to get an octopad. I said, what's that? This is the beginning of all this. Stuff. Yeah. You know, oh, okay. So I got the octopad, and they gave me. They put these samples of, of these, they were like trash cans, or something. And I had <laughs> this only thing is, say, hey, on this song you gotta play. This goes here. This trash goes. Here. Okay, but pretty much it was. Yeah, great. that's amazing. That that is amazing. And did you know? Um, did you know who she was at that point, or that it would be like a as big as it was? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I okay. of course, I mean, you know, Madonna was already big. She was already okay. Uh, I and I had, I had, you know, I listened to the radio all the time. Not as much now, but I used to. Because now we have like Bad Bunny and things like that. So I'm not really into <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I used to listen to the radio all the time, just because I love it. Yes, and yes. One of the songs we had to play was for the audition. We never ended up like. By the time the audition started, I was I already had the gig. Pat Leonard says, "Hey man, I love she loves those hands, so don't worry about it. Just have fun." So anyway, oh my yeah, yeah, That's yeah, and um, so one was Papa Don't Preach. There was three. I forget the second one, and then the other one was Live to Tell, which is a beautiful. Mm -hmm. album. Yeah, it is beautiful. But I had heard that song on the radio, and I had no idea it was Madonna. So oh when yeah. They, yeah, so I didn't, but I knew who she was. I knew she was completely huge, you know. Like big, big time. Yes. It was a great gig. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I tell you another little thing. I'm also I'm kind of a space cadet that I don't remember things and I don't. People ask me things. I don't. So this happened. We we go to we go to lunch. This is the very very first day when I meet her. And she comes over to where we we're in lunch, and it's Pat and Jonathan and Jay, myself. And she sits down and she's being her. And, and then she goes, So, Louis, right? You go, Well, it's Louis, but yeah, come on, Louis. Okay. My first boyfriend was Puerto Rican, you know, so I know about you guys. I go, Oh, okay. <laughs> and then she goes, Who you been playing with? You know, I had played with Diana Ross, I had played, you know, some nice gigs, you know. Yeah. And I just like, I just drew a blank. Oh, I, yeah. went like, uh, I, I played the Bay Potato last night with Claire Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, who? You know, like, well, Claire Fisher is a genius of, of, you know, of jazz, you know, but 
you know. Yeah. I was just yeah. Like, was <laughs> Amazing. You know, instead of saying, oh, man, I, just recorded, I just recorded with Rod Stewart. Instead of saying that, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I played the Bay Potato last night with Claire Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I love that story. I know sometimes I, I, you know, sometimes you're in the moment. It's hard to really like think yeah. straight about those things. But, you yeah. know, especially especially faced with a conversation with Madonna, I think I probably wouldn't know yeah. what would yeah. up or down yeah. either. <laughs> yeah, I'm like sitting here and then she is. Oh, my God, that is Madonna. Oh, you know. Right, right. <laughs> And I, I'm a child of the '80s, so Madonna was that was my first um, cassette tape that I ever had. And you know, I was of course walking around the house singing "Like a Virgin" and all of that. And my <laughs> yeah, early stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a young child, um, yeah. but you know, it's just it's amazing. And she just announced her uh, tour, like yeah. world tour that she's doing. So amazing, yeah. you know, great for her. That's she's still doing it. Good for her. Yeah, right. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty incredible. I do have to say, I love that you even know who um, Bad Bunny is. So, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I, I, let me tell you something else about her. I'll tell you something else because I heard something. I mean, I love football, and you know, the Super Bowl just happened. Sure, yeah. And and I was listening to a lot of the commentaries the following day, which was yesterday. I actually had to drive to Hollywood for a session, so on the radio I was listening to ESPN, and they were talking about lip singing. Because yeah. they say there's a thing about Rihanna, she lip sync or not, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But the comment from people are saying that the people that were talking was like, well, all singers, you know, if they're dancing, they're lip singing. You know. Well, you know what? Not true. Madonna sang every word and every song in every tour. I don't know about now, but when I did them, every one of the songs. There was no samples of her voice. I love I that. Yeah, right. In. She, That's amazing. She was first of all, I, we had we had tra a, tra a couple of trainers in the tour, you know, and she would like work out with these guys. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the trainers told me, "Man, she she is in Olympic. She's in such good shape, you know, physically working out work, you know. And that's the only way she can do what she's doing because she's all over the place singing, and she could do it." Yeah. She's in so good shape. Yeah. So that's yeah. She anybody say that she's lip singing? She never lip sing. I love that. I love that. And we hear it from the source right there. That's great. Yeah. And yeah. you know, I know there are other there are other uh singers who are that definitely sing. I think of uh Pink comes to mind. Pink, you know, yeah. she's like doing aerial acrobatics and it's she's singing, she's doing right. that, you know. So right. If they are out there. I think with the Super Bowl, and I might be wrong about this, but just from providing what we called silent symbols over the years, where the you know it's like two symbols together, so it doesn't make any sound, you know, so you can mimic playing. But um, yeah. over the years for the Super Bowl, for providing symbols like that, or knowing that you know it didn't really matter what the symbols, you know, we would have special painted symbols and things for different bands that played. Um, and it didn't matter so much what they sounded like because they weren't broadcasting the actual sound. It was all mimicked playing. But I think that's because of the issue of actually making it sound good in a football stadium in that, yeah. you know, short amount of time, right? Changeover. And then you have to like. I mean, I, I did the. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no. I, go ahead. Yeah. I did the Super Bowl in 2000 or 2001 with Phil Collins. And it was, yeah. it, we, I forget which, it was 2000, 2001. In, in Atlanta, it was the game, it was the Rams and the Titans. And the Super Bowl, it, it's an event, of course. And then the, the, the half thing, like we had to see the game, but the instructions were when the second quarter starts, we got to get back down there. Right. And we got to prepare. And everybody's just, it's, it's chaos, man. All this stuff it has to be done in like minutes, has to be right. set up. We rehearsed for a week. The rehearsal, we were there for a week rehearsing the whole thing every day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's they they really so I'm sure that's the way they do it now. I mean, that's yeah. it's like a lot of preparation and there's not a lot of time and there's no time for a mess messing up. No. Or, right? There's no time for like sound sound check or sound issues or any right. of that, so, right? So, well, so we didn't we didn't play. We we had recorded our stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't exactly. play. Phil sang. 
he did sing. That's but, great. But everything else was all piped in because there's no way you can get that out there. There's no way to set it up. There's no time. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah, it would be it would be impossible to make it work um, and, make, and make it actually sound good, too. Um, right. Speaking of Phil Collins, though, I have to ask you about, you know, playing with him in that tour and all of that. I mean, he's just such an icon and playing with a musician who is also a drummer. You know, it's got to be really yeah. interesting. It's it's incredible. That's that exactly, you nailed it. A lot of people. Are, it's, it's the, my first answer is. Yeah, I'm playing for a star. That's a drummer. Yeah. And not just a drummer, a great drummer. Like yes. a dude, you know, an icon, you know. So it's yeah, just not exactly. a secret. So it's really, really a cool thing. I'll tell you um, a little story. So we started rehearsing for this tour in 97, I think. Whatever. Yeah, it's going into the light. And so we're, we're in Switzerland rehearsing. Oh, well, there's a couple of stories, but um, I'll tell you the one for the first one. My first, the first time I worked with him for the big band, he's got a, he put a band together. He want to play. He told me, he called me and says, Hey, my, my dream is to be Buddy Rich. That's my dream. Oh. When, when he calls me, he says, you know, there's millionaires out there that they, they buy a, a yacht for millions of dollars or they buy a, a jumbo plane for millions of dollars. This is my boat, a big band. I want to have a big band because I love Buddy Rich. Yes. <laughs> it's great, man. You know, so we go out to rehearse <laughs> excuse me, in, um, in Switzerland for the big band. Thing. And uh, a couple of days into the rehearsal, Phil comes by and goes, hey, did you get that cassette from uh, from Steve? Go, uh, no, what cassette is this? Well, there's a couple songs you got to play drums on because I'm going to I'm gonna have to go out. I'm going to play, you know. The band, but at the end, people are gonna want to see me sing, so I'm gonna have to go up front. So you gotta play the drums. I go, Phil, I don't play drums. Did you ever <laughs> ask me? Did you ever ask me if I ever played the drum set? You know, I've done <laughs> one drum set gig in my life. You know what it was? It was my wedding. Oh wow! <laughs> my niece's <is> wedding. <laughs> so, and he, he just looked at me because he's like totally focused guy, man. He looked at me, he's like, "Get the tape. You can do it." <laughs> He goes, you can it. do it. Besides, besides, what do you want me to do? Now we got to bring Chester up here, and then we got to have two <laughs> drums because he's right handed. You're left handed. You can do it. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> can I have a cassette? So I had to play uh, a song called Always, which is a, a jazz waltz. That was really mm -hmm. easy. And a song that he sang with uh, Quincy Jones on one of the Quincy's records called Do Nothing for Till You Hear From Me. You know, it's a famous jazz song, but it's like yeah. Jr. have played on it. It's like I never do that. I did the first. I it. it worked. The first gig was at Royal Albert Hall. Oh my gosh! Royal Albert Hall. Uh, President at the time he was alive, President Mandela. It was a it was a show for President Mandela, and and Princess Di was there. Wow. And it was being broadcasted live on the BBC. That's incredible. My first, my first drum gig. That's no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. No pressure. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> if yeah. Nelson Mandela's in the audience and the princess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nobody really important is here, you know. And it's broadcasted live. Oh, my gosh. You know, the text, you know, there's this guy, Steve Jones, uh, put, they call him Put. He was like, you know, they were busting me, you know, because I had to. Phil says a different. The one thing they did for me, they they got a different snare drum, because he Phil plays the snare with a weird angle. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for me, and they changed my seat so I could sit a little lower, mm -hmm. and they gave me a pair of my sticks, you know. Oh my gosh! But as as they're doing that, and I'm moving over to the drums, Hood goes, "Hey, don't forget this is being li this is life, man." <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. Thanks. <laughs> no butterflies. <laughs> That is, that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. The, the, the other one is now we move on to the the pop tour. Now it's not the the big jazz band. Mm -hmm. So this is 97. And we go out to Switzerland again to rehearse. We have the stage there and we rehearse. And about three or four days into the 
this is how cool Phil is, man. Into the rehearsals, I'm in my room like at 10 o'clock at night or something. My phone rings. It's Phil. Hey, Luis. Yeah, Phil, what's happening? I say, hey, listen. He put it to me this way. He says, listen, I never had a percussion player in the band. It's usually Chester. At, and this tour that I was, uh, that I started with, it was Ricky Lawson, the late Ricky Lawson. Mm -hmm. So now we have Ricky. So uh, we always do a drum thing in the show. But I never had a percussionist, so I don't know what's kind of comfortable for you. Because if anything will work for you. So if you don't mind, like that, he said, if you don't mind, if you want to put something together and show it to us, maybe we can do it. If I don't mind? Are you kidding? You got it, Phil. Sure, man. Boop, hung up the phone. I put this whole thing together just in my room, you know, trying to write things out. Yeah, yeah. I called Kobe, the the uh, head sound man or, or sound guy. I said, hey, Kobe, we got to go in an hour earlier because I need to record something. So I got to show it to, to Phil. You know? We did the thing. We recorded it after the rehearsal. That day of rehearsal, I went, hey, Phil, remember you asked me about a percussion thing? I put it together if, if you want to hear it. He was actually surprised. Really? Already? He goes, yeah, yeah. We haven't recorded. I said, okay, let's check it out. He heard it. He loved it. He says, okay, we'll do it. And that's wow. why you're here on the on the video on the '97 tour. That is amazing. I I love that. And yeah. so a, a couple things come to mind. One being, you talked earlier about the Madonna audition and showing up early and being really prepared and having your gear everything right. And then you just mentioned this. You know, you got this opportunity and you seized it and you had this prepared right away. Um, and that kind of strikes me because I think like you said earlier, it's not just about how great you play or your chops or, you know, all of that. It, it really has a lot to do with your personality, like you said, and the preparation, right? Like yeah, being able to get it done. You got to take care of business. It's, yes. Take care. I mean, you know, you were just asked to put something together. What are you going to, you're going to wait a week or two weeks, work on right. it right now, start putting it right. together however long it takes. And maybe it, it took me one night. It could have taken me, you know, I could have played it for him and said, oh, that's cool. But can we like, you know, could have taken a couple of days, but you work yeah. on it. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Take care of business. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And, and, and the other thing that came to mind is um, I loved turning on the television often and seeing you. You know, no. it would be, yeah. And I'd just be like, oh my gosh, that's Luis, you know, like all the time, everywhere. <laughs> no, for a <laughs> while. Shows and, you know, these, these, um, these live broadcasts and yeah. all the time. It was just so, so great. And I never knew who you'd be playing with, Thank but you. I did recently see, um, it was from the, the big band tour. It was a, uh, something that was on YouTube, um, and then I saw you, and I was just like, "Yeah, hey, it's Louise." You know? was, it, was it a Montreal thing, Montreal Jazz Festival then? I think that's what it was. Yeah. 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 They, they, there's a version, really cool version, with the Phil Collins big band with uh, of uh, pick up the pieces of the average white band. Yes. Yes. If you can find that. That's a really cool one. It has has all these great saxophone players soloing, Quincy's conducting, and and it's rocking. The band is rocking. I mean, I love the that. Phil and me, I mean, that it, it's killing. That's so yeah. great. I'm going to have to, um, I'll have to put some links in the description um, yeah. on YouTube and then in the podcast description so people can like, you know, click on those and, and check out what we're talking about because, um, yeah, the performance, the, the performance that I remember seeing, this was probably a few months back, but it was, or maybe, maybe a little longer than that, but it was so, so good. Oh, um, thanks. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I just recently, so Phil did a project with uh, Drumeo that will be out soon. Okay. And so I helped set that up with um, Phil and his son, Nick. Yeah. And, and it was such a, it was such an amazing thing to work on because it, I just never, you know, he, he had this kind of tour that he just did this, this farewell kind of tour. And yeah. I just never imagined um, having the chance to put something together, to help put something together. Yeah. Uh, with him and and what an amazing um person nick is i don't know if you've had much contact oh, yeah. with Nick. what a great great guy you know just... 
Yeah, he's amazing. I, I mean, I toured uh, the last tour that Jay, uh, the Phil did as Phil Collins, because after that he did Genesis. Mm -hmm. uh, Gen uh, what year was it? I mean, 2018, I think. 17, 2017, 2018. And I remember about about a year before that we got together, or a few months before that we got. He, he flew us down to, to Miami because Nick was living down in Miami, mm -hmm. and uh, to rehearse. And Nick was the drummer at rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he was like seventeen or something, or sixteen. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Oh, wow, you know we all we were. I was. We were all amazed. I mean, he he was so prepared. You know, he'd done his homework. You know, he really wanted to do the thing. He's such a nice cat as a gentleman. You know, he's just, he's a 16 year old punk, yeah. but he acts like a grown man. I mean, you know, he's just a great it's, kid. It's amazing, right? I know. And in my interactions with him, too, I was thinking the same. I didn't realize how young uh, he was. He's yeah. still, my gosh, I think he's early, very early 20s, maybe 21 or something like he that now. 21. Yeah, 21. But I was like, I hope, I hope my kids grow up to be like that, you know, like real such a good good human he's a gentleman he's yeah. fantastic and, and he just did amazing you know after we got we got together for like i think it was a week and then everybody went home and phil sent me a, a uh an email and asked me hey uh lots of people don't this is not announced yet but i'm thinking i'm gonna go on, we're gonna go on tour what do you think you think nick can do it and i went man i don't you know nick as a as, as a person better than me because you're his father but as a sure. musician as a musician he can do the gig, man. As a as a guy, a bro, as a drummer, he can do the gig. Personally, if you think he can hang with everybody, he can last. He's he's the man, and he did it incredibly well, incredibly well. That's so great. Amazing. So, so great. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I I'm just curious if you I'm just, you have I'm sure you are full of stories about <laughs> about these different experiences. Is there anything that kind of sticks out to you that um, just an experience that you had playing. I, again, it's just, there's, I'm sure there are so many through the years. Well, but. Yeah. It's kind of hard to think about. I, I tell you this one, I'm thinking about Cuban music now. And, and mm -hmm. Cuba. you know, the band Ida Kere. Mm -hmm. And it was the original is this, you know, Chucho Valdez on piano, Arturo Sandoval, Paquito Rivera, Carlos Abraham, all these Enrique Plow on, on drums that, the conga player they have was a guy, a guy named El Nino. He was, I play a lot of the things I do when I play more than one, more than two conga drums, mm -hmm. three or four. A lot of the stuff I do is from watching him. I never saw him play live. I, I never saw that guy live. Sure. On video. Incredible. So a lot of the stuff. So he's a big influence for me. Anyway, so this is years ago. We were, I was recording a record with Cheryl Crow. I'm in a studio and mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be there one or two days. And the first day that morning, I get a call from a, a fellow named Juan Morillo. It says, Hey, Luis, are you in town? I go, Yeah, man. Hey, listen, tomorrow night, nobody really knows this. It's Irake. This is with the blockade, the whole thing, the embargo. Uh, Irake is going to, some of the guys from Irake are coming to play at UCLA. But it cannot be a performance where they get paid. So it's like kind of like a clinic, you know, because mm -hmm. of all government stuff. But not all of them are co can come and got a visa or whatever. So they need a percussion player. Do you want to you do it? I went, are you kidding me? <laughs> I know every note that this guy never played. Oh, I love I it. Love this man. So I'm like, yeah, so wh when is it? You know, so, well, no, it's tomorrow. What, what time? Seven o'clock? I says, oh, man. Shoot, I'm with Hugh Pageant and, and Cheryl Crow recording, but I, I got to get out of there. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not playing with Chucho. So um, it's at UCLA, this and that. Right? Luckily, the studio was kind of on the west side. And I got there, and I said, hey, guys, someone's come up. And I got to get out. I got 6 o'clock. I got I to gotta go. So I left, you know, 6 o'clock. I get mm -hmm. I get. Traffic in LA, all this stuff. I find a place where we are now. I walk backstage, and it's literally two or three minutes before they go on. Oh wow! I got there that, that late, and I just walk up, and they're, they're literally standing behind the curtain, ain't ready to go on. I go, Chucho, Prime Video, that's so so, you know, Luis Conte, 
man, I'm your biggest fan. I'm gonna, I can't believe I'm gonna play with you guys. You know, I'm like, I'm a, ro- I'm a, I'm a groupie, man. I mean, like, I'm so excited. And they're all looking at me as like, and what did, one of them said to me, we we thought you were older. <laughs> he said, That's the old. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you don't get it. Boom, now we're on stage. Oh, my gosh. So Trucho comes over to me and says, hey, we're going to play Mambo Influenciado. I said, oh, okay, okay. I know it, I know it. Okay. I know all the tunes. Yeah. So we played the first song. And that song, at the end, has a kind of a complicated ending, you know, mm-hmm. a riff. And he's, you know, he just, Trucho goes, you know, just look at me when stuff's coming up. He said, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at him. He's cueing me that the end is coming. And I nailed it. Oh, that's awesome. And I'll never forget this. Chucho stands up from the piano and looks at me and says, hey, everything that you were telling me, you were telling us about two minutes ago, is true. (laughs) 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 We love this man, you know. Oh, that's amazing. How cool is that? Like a... That's like true full circle moment there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, incredible very, and, yeah. and how about like well you just mentioned that you played for princess die and nelson mandela <laughs> like have you yeah. have you ever um just looked out into the audience or side stage or something and been like oh my gosh so yeah. and so right but, yeah but to me it's more like i don't really get really starstruck about that it's, right right it's, it's cool but if you have somebody like changuito or right like, the audience you know, I, exactly. Here, here, here's you know, here's one. There's a a little uh, club, a restaurant called Mambo's Cafe it's here in in Burbank. Unfortunately, they stopped doing the music thing, but they used to have music on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The owner loved music. You know, it's really catered to the band. It was really nice to everybody. Mm-hmm. And one day, I got a gig with my band. I got a little seven piece band, six piece band that would play traditional Cuban music. And uh, I walk in the club with my, I'm playing timbales that day. I walk in the club with timbales. And not in the back, but where I'm going to be set up, the chair, the table in front of where I'm going to set up is Changuito. Wow. I walk in, I was like, Luis, I'm going, holy shit. What a, that's the king of the thing. What a, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, that. Yeah, when you ask me, oh, you're going to see, look at the audience of somebody. Oh, yeah, that's one night. Yeah. Where's Changuito right there? I better, I better. <laughs> right, I know that. That's incredibly nerve wracking. I, I think for drummers, especially for percussionists, drummers, um, there's something about, you know, another player, and and you, you have a unique experience playing with other drummers all the time, right? So playing with the Steve yeah. Gads of the world and uh, oh, the yeah. Jonathan Moffitts and all of that. So you have like a totally different experience, but but seeing, you know, your percussion, you know, so someone out there who who is like that, that that has to be, that's when you kind of like get a little yeah. shaky in the legs, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, Changuito is there watching, can't come over to watch you play timbales, you know? Same, mm-hmm. Cali, that's like another great Cuban timbal player that lives in Miami named uh, Calisto Oviedo, Mr. Virtuoso. And he was, you know, the same thing, you know. Yeah. There Amazing. he is. Oh, I better play good, you know. Yeah. Well, right? Well, I'm I'm enjoying seeing, you know, Cuban music um, being, mm-hmm. becoming a little more mainstream. You know, I, I at uh, PASIC this past November, the Pedrito Martinez group yeah. played. And, I, you know, to see the audience react and, move to the music and like really just be so and of course it's a it's an audience of drummers and percussionists so uh everyone's everyone's in it but it's that that's incredible to me i like to see that and you know i don't know if you um are experience any experiencing any new music or hearing anything out there that's striking you um bad money no just kidding (laughs) no yeah I, i mean there's always something new i'm looking at Indian music and, and I, I like watching videos of mm-hmm. now stuff that I know, you know, it was for, I, a lot of it. I don't even know what it is. You know, yeah. what I'm watching and you just get things out of it, you know, Absolutely. Um, I liked writing some tunes and stuff like that. I, I'm going to get ready to like, we're going to start doing a, 
a record that I've never done. I've got like seven records, but I've never done something really traditional. I'm gonna oh, do a wow. very, very traditional from like my hometown record. Oh, I love that. Will you play guitar on it at all? I'll play a little bit, but uh, Good. My, my partner, I'll play a little rhythm. My partner, mm -hmm. uh, his name is San Miguel Perez. He's a great, there's a, it's a guitar in Cuba called the Tres. I don't know if you know about this guitar. It's it's strong. It's it's got six strings, but it's strong like a twelve string, like two groups, three groups of two. So two, okay. groups, two on two. So there's a lot of space in between the string. That's a definite influence from Africa. That yes. comes to Cuba, it becomes takes the Spanish guitar and they make these strings away and it turns into an African Afro Cuban instrument. Mm -hmm. This guy is a virtuoso, San Miguel. And we're reading some things, and we're gonna start. We got a rehearsal this week to start like rehearsing, putting it together. We're gonna record. You know, those those are the new things. You know that. I love that. I love it. So, so we can look forward to that. Maybe yeah. later. Maybe later in the year, possibly. We'll yeah, keep an eye sure. out. Okay. It, it'll be done. We'll, we'll do it this year for sure. Got yes. Oh, it's so exciting. And and so for anyone who's listening who wants to follow along with what you have going on and um, keep an eye out for the album, should they follow you on social media? Yeah, just, you know, me, I'm on social media and Instagram. I got a website, you know, LuisConte.com. You know. And I will link everything too. So everyone will be able to just click on there and yeah. give you a follow. Well, thank you so much, Luis. It was amazing to catch up with you and hear about all this great stuff and hear the stories, which I love. And I know everyone listening will love as well. So I appreciate it. Oh man. I'm so happy we we're able to do it. Uh, it took a little while to get it together, but we did yeah. it. That's great. <laughs> it did. We did it. We're here now. So that's it all that matters. <laughs> great to see you too, even from a distance, but you look great. And, and I hope I see you in person. So I do too. I hope we see each other in person sometime soon. Maybe the next basic, maybe we'll see. Yes, absolutely. We'll have to make that happen. All right. All right. See you soon. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Join us each Tuesday for new episodes of Sarah Hagen Backstage.